This is my fish room. I keep many types of fish from all over the world, and I'm no stranger to aggressive fish, but no one could have prepared me for this one. Okay, that intro was a little dramatic, but seriously, no one could have prepared me for keeping an African tiger's cat. And that's because only a few people actually keep these fish. There are almost no informational videos about this species, with the exception of the videos that I posted. Over the years, these fish have proven to be a difficult import, making them a rare fish in a pet trade, which keeps the price of these fish at premium level. The average price for a dime sized tiger scat is a hundred bucks. Because of this, few people dare to keep these fish, especially since there's no track record of their behavior in aquariums. There are multiple sites that talk about how big they get, what they eat, and their behavior in the wild, but not enough people have kept them to share personal experiences through social media or forum posts. And that's a big part of the hobby. Care sheets are nice, but what determines if I buy a fish or not is the experience of other fish keepers. Before I get a fish, I need to know how a fish reacts to living with other fish. I need to know if that fish is shy or bold. I need to know if a fish is prone to certain diseases or if they are picky eaters. This is a part of the research that I do before I get any fish, but I couldn't do this with the African tiger scat. Then I decided, someone has to step up. We need a pioneer to pave the way of these fish. Someone to buy an African tiger scat. I've been keeping an African tiger scat for almost two years now, and if I had to describe this fish in one sentence, it's a saltwater fish pretending to be a freshwater fish. If you've ever seen a saltwater aquarium with tangs, angelfish, and wrasses, these fish are very smart and very intentional in everything that they do. The African tiger scat behaves very similar. They are very smart fish, and honestly, when I bought mine, I was expecting them to be not so smart like my silver dollars. No offense. I expected dither and fish behavior like what you will see with most of the fish in the Charison family, but that hasn't been the case. The tiger scout has intelligence similar to cichlids, and a smart fish is good at two things, identifying his food source. Whenever he wants to be fed, he does this thing where he shakes his head and tries to make sure that I see him. And the second skill of a smart fish is conquering the weaker fish around him, unfortunately. The tiger scat started off with the weakest, most innocent fish, the silver dollars. He mainly targeted them during feeding times, and this was his way of eliminating competition for food. I doubt that it has something to do with the silver dollars being shaped similar to the tiger scat, because tiger scats are very aggressive towards their own kind or fish that look similar but the scat started targeting other fish that don't look anything like them. It's become obvious that the tiger scat will try to dominate any fish that's smaller than him, which puts even some of my aggressive cichlids at risk. This is terrible behavior, but it's not a deal breaker for this fish. 
I hate the aggression that the scat shows, but it only gets this bad during feedings. I've had other fish show much worse aggression non-stop. Another reason why it's not so bad is because he targets so many fish. No one experiences his aggression for too long because he's distracted by another target. And finally, my Vieja Melanura is the dominant fish of the tank, and I'm sure that he could provide corrective action if the Tiger Scout gets too out of hand. So yeah, that's the biggest surprise so far with this species. I would have never imagined that this fish would be so smart and so aggressive. I originally wanted him to be the main focal point of my 210 gallon aquarium, but he ruined this opportunity by targeting my rainbow fish. So now he's stuck in his 125, but maybe if it gets big enough, I could one day add him to my biggest tank. Now that's been my experience with the African Tiger Scat. I already made a video sharing basic care information, but I could give you an updated version. These fish originate from the coast of Africa, and technically they are saltwater fish. They can live in saltwater, brackish water, and freshwater, and they are the only scat species that can live in freshwater for their entire lives. The fact that these fish can live in the ocean, and brackish lagoons, and in freshwater rivers and lakes, is what makes it difficult to import these fish. Because they could go anywhere, it's tough to have a steady collection location. This impacts the pricing of these fish, so they will likely continue to be expensive fish until hobbyists start to breed them. In the wild, they are a school in fish and are always found in large numbers. In aquariums, the rule is you can have one or you must have a large school of eight or more. These fish develop an intense hierarchy and if you only get a few, they will pick on the weakest fish until it dies and this continues until only one is left. Larger groups help divide aggression better so they can coexist better. But with current prices, no thanks. They are herbivores and they love leafy greens. I mainly feed romaine lettuce, but mine will also devour dandelion leaves, spinach, and duckweed. I find that the scat is not as aggressive when eating veggies compared to regular fish food, probably because the veggies last much longer. They could grow up to 12 inches, and in two years, mine went from the size of a quarter to the size of, um, well, there's nothing to compare. He's about five and a half inches long, and he's round, so the same with his height. You could probably go a few years keeping one in a four foot tank like a 75 or a 90 gallon, but as a full size adult, a 125 gallon would be ideal, especially if you want to keep it with other fish. As for tank mates, avoid Australian rainbow fish for sure, and maybe silver dollars too. When he was inside of my 210 gallon tank, he lived with tiger barbs, clown loaches and bala sharks, but it never bothered them. I think the loaches are a good mix, but I probably got lucky with him not noticing the barbs, so I would avoid them as well. Aggressive cichlids are probably the best way to go. I imagine a tiger scat would mix well with African cichlids. Mine is with New World cichlids, and they are also a good match. Now I do believe that the tiger scat's aggression is a bluff. If it came down to an actual fight, I don't think that he has it in him. So if your fish are extra aggressive, this may not be the best option for you. My previous video has more information on how to care for this fish. You can find that link in the cards above or in the description. All in all, this fish is one of the most unique fish that I keep. He's super smart and interactive, and it's like as he grows, he shows a new character trait. My goal is to grow this fish up to be a model specimen for the species, and if you would like to see that happen, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you later.